Hello everyone, Forex here with another tutorial. In this video I'm gonna show you how to use the command for each, a command that can save you a lot of work, especially if you need to deal with writing very similar commands for many units in the game or in general if you need to work with many units at once. Ok, let's start by creating a lot of units. Imagine a mission with tanks, several groups of soldiers on both sides, big battle and near the end you suddenly for some reason want everyone to die. And now, let's assume that you named every single soldier on both sides, about 40-50 names and to kill them all you would have to write the set damage command 50 times, one for each soldier on the map. That's a very bad way of editing, it takes too much time and memory and once you need to execute more than one simple command you'll have to write hundreds of lines of code only to perform something quite simple like for example adding a few grenades to all soldiers. Luckily there is a way of making these things easier. For each command works in the following way. It takes an array and executes given commands on each member of the array. The array can contain variables like names of the objects of soldiers and vehicles it can also contain numbers that can be seen in for example the get post command that I talked about in a different tutorial. The coordinates are just numbers and you could in theory add or subtract a number to each of the coordinates using the for each command. The array can also contain different data types but let's forget about that for now. I want to show you how exactly the command works. Let's go back to our example. We have around 50 soldiers on a field and for some reason we want them all dead. We could use 50 commands set damage for every single soldier or we could use the for each command. The structure is as follows. A code inside brackets for each array of objects that we want to work with. So the array will be an array of names or variables for each soldier. So we will write a name of each soldier, divide them by a comma and close the names inside brackets. And once we are done, it's time to write the set damage command. Now the commands have to be applied to all soldiers from the array, but the set damage command needs only one variable, it's something set damage one. That's why there is a magic variable underscore x that can be used in combination with for each command. So, we want to write something like underscore x set damage 1 for each and make an array of all units that we want to kill. This is the most basic and simple use of the for each command. The command takes each element of the array, substitutes the underscore x with that element, executes the command and moves to the next element in the array. Right, now there are many uses of the for each command many of them and I definitely don't want to show you all possible ways to use the for each. I don't even know many of the combinations that can be used. Instead I'm gonna show you how to expand the command. This could help you in many situations when you are making a mission. Repeat, for each can be used for many more things. I just picked several common structures that can often be useful in many missions and are simple enough so that they can be understood easily. Ok, let's do it. The first example is completely fine, but in some missions you can find yourself having to use the for each several times in a script. You can add stuff to all the soldiers in the same array, then remove it, add something else, wait a moment, remove it and so on. In that case you will have to use the for each more times and you might feel like you need to copy the array every single time. Well, if you want to make your work easier, you can define the array at the beginning of the script, assign it to a variable and then use the variable instead of the entire long array. You can also pass the array as a parameter if you need and know how to do it. Another very useful thing, especially if you wish to affect all units with no exceptions, is to use the all units. This is another valid option in for each command and applies the effect to all units on the map. In our case it kills everyone and we don't even have to name any units. The game handles it automatically. Another very nice word is this list. 
This can be used in triggers and basically, once you use it, the game looks at the trigger settings and then executes the commands for soldiers that pass the conditions. So if we make a trigger and set it to blue for present, it will automatically kill all soldiers that are present in the given area. A very nice tool in many missions. So, in the last example I had here, every single unit on the map got killed by the command. That's ok in some missions, but in most of them, even if you want to kill all units, you probably want the player to survive, so that the user can continue playing, even if you plan to kill him with a scripted death later. So, you'll have to rewrite the code a bit, we can leave the all units be, because after all, we want to execute this for all units and just exclude player from the list. So, we'll write something like this. If brackets underscore x doesn't equal to player, close brackets, then brackets any code for each and the rest is as usual. By doing this, we have excluded player from the list and at the same time we've used a if then structure. That should give you new ideas right now because we can use many more conditions directly in the for each command to select specific units dynamically instead of making static arrays. Last example I'm going to show you here, imagine a mission where you want units to get to a vehicle named truck. After a certain time, soldiers that aren't anywhere near the truck get killed. In this example, you have no way of knowing which specific units get to the truck and which ones don't, so you can't create an array with names. Instead, we use the if then once more. If underscore x distance truck is more than 200 meters, then underscore x set damage 1 for each all units. If you are writing a script, you can make a very simple countdown by simply putting a sleep command at the start, sleep a couple of seconds or minutes, let the soldiers get close to the truck and then eliminate the rest. So yeah, hopefully you have at least a basic idea of the use of the for each command. It's a very good thing to know and use in your missions, sometimes it can save some time and memory, other times it can enable you to make things that are practically impossible with other commands. And that's it for this video, I hope to see you all in the next one, comment, like and share and have a great day!